Governor, you're invited to speak to women about getting involved in politics. Mm -hmm. What do you find that people want you to talk about? What do, what do they want to know? They want to know how to do it. Uh, they want to know the basics. Those women haven't been exposed that much, and they're not as many programs or as much effort made to get them in as there should be. Although after this election cycle, one of the good things is there are more women who are getting involved and have registered to vote than had before when they suddenly realized, I think everybody's realized, hey, the ballot box makes a difference. Why in 2017 do you think that more women aren't running for office? First of all, it's gotten much more expensive and it's taken women a while to understand the, what, they, what it does take financially and as they, we still don't get the same, there isn't pay equity, it isn't parity yet. Uh, and so you don't have as many women as CEOs who can give the really big dollars. So it's been taking women a while to understand that $500 doesn't make it anymore. It's got to be 5000 and to get to a point where you have that discretionary income. Plus, women have other responsibilities. They have, uh, not that men don't as well, but women will all be, be looked at as the primary caregivers for an elderly parent, a, a child, or a significant other. Uh, so there's that strain. And it's gotten so nasty. It's gotten so nasty. Plus, people not just women, young people, and that's what really worries me about the future, is young people don't see politics as a way to get anything done. What do you think needs to change? I think the parties themselves need to ask women and say, look, we do want you. They need to wake up to the fact that women bring a whole different perspective, set of life experiences, uh, ways of dealing with problems than, than the men do. And you need that at the decision-making table, just the way you need more minorities. You need those different life experiences to get the kind of solutions that can solve the problems that we face today. We hear that more women have to get involved at the party level as leaders in order to bring more w women in to run for office. Do you agree with that? Is that oh, still absolutely. the case? I think that's absolutely true. I mean, I know that during my term, I appointed more women to decision-making positions than had been ever appointed before with the first female chief of staff, the first female uh, attorney general, uh, chief of the Supreme Court, and a whole host of other positions. And when women see women in those positions, they say, oh, I can do that too. I'd like to ask you about leadership, certainly a quality we expect of people in public service. What does that imply, do you think? In a leader, they're looking for someone who listens, who doesn't just talk at them, but who listens and will absorb what they're saying, maybe not change a position solely based on that, but at least be reflective of their concerns. But you've got to know why you think something is important if you want to make change and if you want people to go along with you. With all of your years in public service, Governor, what was the biggest struggle that you had to face when you first got involved? Uh, probably was low expect. Well, actually, it turned out to be in my favor. Low expectations of a woman when I, uh, not so much when I ran for for a freeholder, but when I ran in the Senate, it worked in my favor because the fact that I could put two sentences together made me seem brilliant. Um, and then when I had the debates with Bradley and he didn't wipe me up, uh, that gave me real credibility because expectations were so low. But I did get a lot of, well, I'll never vote for a woman, and you shouldn't be doing this, and you've got young children. What do you? who's taking care of the children, as if you hadn't thought of that before you took on the issue. But uh, those, were, those were challenging to get over that. That's changed, don't you think, now? Uh, not as much as you'd want it to. I mean, you still hear a lot more about women, uh, the way they look, their hair, their way they dress, uh, than the men. And that's something that really is irrelevant to your ability to serve and your leadership capacity. So what's going to bring about change in that regard, do you think, Governor? I think we are. When we start saying, you know, I really don't care. <laughs> That's not, I'm not voting for someone because of the way they dress. I'm voting for them because of what they say, what they believe in, whether I trust that they, in fact, will continue to be that person. And that's a big concern that people have. They, uh, they listen to somebody on the campaign trail and don't expect to see that same person when they get into office, and that's just wrong. Well, you've been an example for women, certainly, Governor Whitman. And thank you very much for sharing your views. Thank you.